Also for the Muslim, we're still talking about the Salah. Also with regard to the Muslim, it is also mandatory, mando, to go to Juma Salah, Juma prayer. It is mandatory for the Muslim male, the Muslim man, the one who is of adolescence. It is mandatory to go to the Juma prayer. And this is stated in chapter 62 of the Quran, which is called Surah Juma. This is the Surah of Juma. Allah Subhanahu says, and leave off all business and trade and hasten to the Salah. So it is mandatory for the Muslim male to attend the Juma prayer. If the Muslim male misses three consecutive Juma, if the Muslim male misses three consecutive Jumas. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that Allah will put a seal on that person's heart. Allah will put a seal on the heart. So this is a warning about missing the Juma prayer and not going to the Juma prayer without a valid reason. Okay? You just didn't go because you didn't go or you caught up in doing something else. Three consecutive Jumas Allah will put a seal on that person's heart. In another narration it says that Allah will make that person of the ghafilin, mean he'll make him heedless. In another hadith, showing the magnitude of missing the Juma prayer, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that he had the notion to have somebody make the adhan and all those who didn't attend the prayer to go burn their house down. This is in hadith, to show the magnitude of missing the Juma prayer. That he had the notion, but he didn't do it. But he had the notion, if it was up to him, he would make somebody make the Adan and then go out and find out who didn't come to the Salat and burn their house down. That's the magnitude of missing the Juma prayer. Also, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that anyone who did not come to the Juma prayer, because Allah says, leave off all business and trade, that all transactions, that are done during the time of the Juma time. So once the Muaddin makes the Adhan until the Salat is commenced or over with, that all transactions that are done during the time of Juma are not valid. All transactions during the time of Juma prayer are null and void. And another Hadith, he said, may Allah curse that transaction. Also it is cursed. So if a person does a business transaction during the time of Juma, it's not valid. If a person gets married in a time of Juma prayer, it's not valid. It's null and void. It doesn't count. You cannot do anything during the time of the Juma prayer. You see some Muslim countries, when the, when the time for Juma comes, everything shuts down. And they got police that walk around with sticks and whatnot. If you ain't closed up your shop, they're going to close it down for you. Because it's time for Juma. Ain't no business transaction. Ain't no buying and selling. Ain't no weddings. Ain't no contracts going on during the time of Juma. When the Khatib, and the Khatib is the one that does the khutbah. Okay, inshallah we'll try to get some, some words. Khatib. The Khatib is the one that does the khutbah. The khutbah is the talk. Speaker. The Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said that there are two angels. They stand at the door. And once the Khatib says, Assalamu alaikum, to commence the khutbah, it says that the angels roll up the scroll and sit down and listen to the khutbah. So everybody that comes after the khutbah has started, they don't get the reward as the people who were there before. Now they get the reward of the Dhuhr prayer. They don't get the reward of Juma no more. They get the reward of Dhuhr prayer. Now, again, with regards to Juma, because now we're talking about Juma, this is also a prayer that is mandatory. There are prerequisites to the Juma prayer. Okay? Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said in the Hadith that the one who does this, this, and this, and this for the Juma, they get the reward of 10 days of forgiveness. But you have to fulfill these prerequisites. You don't fulfill these prerequisites, you don't get this reward of 10 days of forgiveness. Okay? So we want the 10 days of forgiveness for attending Juma. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, wear your best of clothes. And the best color to wear on Juma is white or green. These are the best colors. 
These are the colors of paradise, white and green, preferably. Not saying that you have to wear these, but the best colors to wear are white and green. Now they say wear your best of clothes, meaning that you wear some clean clothes on Juma. Don't wear the same clothes you've been wearing all week. Juma is a special day, and Juma is also considered as an Eid. It's an Eid, meaning a celebration. So these are prerequisites of having the 10 days of forgiveness. Number one, gusel, to take a shower or a bath. Okay, and there's certain prerequisites of the gusel. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Number two, to use the miswak, right, which is the, from the adak tree, miswak, the original toothbrush, or to brush your teeth. It's all right to use toothpaste. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Makes it, main thing is that you get that yuck mouth out the way. Clean your mouth. Number three, you wear the best of clothes, clean clothes. Don't wear the same thing that you were wearing all week. It's funky, it's smelling, right? You ain't got no creases in it, it's wrinkled. Wear the best of clothes and the preferably white or green. Also, clip the nails. Clip the nails. Clip the nails and the toenails. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, spoke about the clipping of the nails. He would clip his nails every Friday for Juma. Right? But he also said, do not allow your nails to go longer than 40 days without clipping them. So when you clip your nails and your toenails, they should not go longer than 40 days without clipping your nails or your toenails. And the best is every Friday. Okay? The best is every Friday. Also, two rakats for tayyatu masjid, meaning to greet the masjid with two rakats. Okay? When you come into the masjid, you do two rakats to greet the masjid. All these are prerequisites of getting these 10 days of forgiveness. So again, gusul, you take a whole full shower or bath, and we'll talk about that in a minute. You use the miswak, you brush your teeth, you wear your best of clothes, man, iron that bad boy. Get the creases in it, get the wrinkles out, right? You wear the best of clothes, you clip your nails, Every Friday or no longer than 40 days, two rakats to greet the masjid. Also, you wear thayib, which means oil. You oil. You use oil, right? Muslim oil called Zaid, right? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he used to oil his beard and he used to oil, put oil in his hair. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said that if you have long hair, honor it. Ain't nothing wrong with having long hair. The Prophet Muhammad said something, he had crop too, he had long hair. And he had braids. He used to put honey on the tips. And he used to put oil in his hair and in his beard. Okay, that is the sunnah. Also, another prerequisite of having the 10 days of forgiveness is that when you are waiting for the Juma to start, no vain talk. No vain talk. Ain't no gossiping, ain't no talking about, you know what I'm saying, stuff that ain't got nothing to do with the dean. So if you're sitting waiting for Juma to start, you shouldn't be back there gossiping or telling stories or talking about this person or that person. If you do, you will not get this reward. The best thing to do while you're sitting and waiting for the khutbah is to dhikr Allah, to read the Quran. And one of the things that we should do on Juma is read Surah Al-Kaf, which is chapter 18. So read Surah Kaf, which is chapter 18. There's a big reward for those who read Surah Al-Kaf on Juma that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that they will shine to the inhabitants of paradise the same way that the moon and the star shines for us and we see it and we look at it in awe if we recite Surah Al-Kaf on Juma that we will shine like a bright light to the inhabitants of paradise and they will be in awe of us. Okay? So no vain talk while you're waiting for the khutbah to start. The best thing to do is read Quran, dhikr, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, laylallah, Muhammad rasulullah, or to make salih upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, allahumma salih ala Muhammad wa ala Ali, right? Salih upon the Prophet. Also, during the khutbah, during the khutbah, no talking, no talking, period, at all. You hear all the, I mean, I mean, you ain't supposed to talk at all, period. 
you hear some of the people that doing all this I mean and yes and yeah and all this other stuff. This is talking. The Prophet Muhammad so some said, even to tell somebody to stop talking, you are guilty of talking and you will not get the reward of the Juma. When you see they make this long dua right before the Salah and I mean, I mean, that's talking. That's a bid'ah. That's an innovation. We don't do that. It's a bid'ah. We don't talk at all, period. So again, these are some of the eight prerequisites of having the 10 days of forgiveness. Now this is something profound. I want 10 days of forgiveness. For this one day, I get 10 days of forgiveness of whatever I did in those 10 days. So I'm gonna make sure I fulfill all of these requirements so I can get this reward. Again, number one, I must make a proper gusel. And like I said, I'll explain what the gusel is and how to do the proper gusel in a minute. Number two, I use the miswak. I brush my teeth, I make sure I don't have yuck mouth, okay? Floss, brush your tongue, whatever. Number three, I wear my best of clothes. I iron it, I get the wrinkles out, okay? I make sure it's not dirty, make sure it doesn't have any uh, a smell to it. The best of clothes are white or green. Also, I clip the nails, right? Don't come to June with dirt all underneath your nails and your toes. Clip your nails. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, used to clip the nails every Friday, but he said if not every Friday, at least not longer than 40 days. Also, when you come into the masjid, you should greet the masjid with two rakats. Don't just come to the masjid for Juma and sit down. This is a prerequisite of the 10 days of forgiveness. So you come in, before you even talk to anybody, before you start, you, know, you tell them, let me make tie out to masjid, I'll get with you in a minute. Let me make my two rakats. Then you can talk. But if you talk, make sure that there's no vain talk. Talk about this deen. Right? Also, I wear tea. I wear oil. Wear the best of oil. The best of oil, as the Prophet Muhammad said, is musk. Now, this is pertaining to the men because the women are not allowed to wear oil. The women are not allowed to wear oil because the Prophet Muhammad said this is an enticement for the men. Okay? It's an enticement for the men. Also, during the khutbah, when the imam is talking, there is no talking, no playing with each other, y'all kids, playing with each other, <laughs> all that other stuff, looking around, talking, women as well, because some women now be back there talking. This is haram, this is forbidden during the khutbah, no talking, okay? So inshallah, one who fulfills all these prerequisites of the Juma, then inshallah, one will get 10 days of forgiveness for that Juma. Inshallah.